Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this week's edition of Photoshop for Video. Today, we're going to take a look at an incredibly useful command called the Color Range command. Now, a lot of folks rely on less sophisticated tools like the Magic Wand tool. Color Range is just as good as Magic Wand, if not better, due to its flexibility. Let's see how it works. I've got a couple of pictures open here, and I'm going to just push them through their paces with the Color Range command and give you a couple ideas on how this could be useful. Let's go ahead and choose Select Color Range and click on the rocks down here. And notice that it's selected all the red in the rocks. And the Color Range window gives you a useful preview. Now, under CS4, we have this option called Localize Color Clusters. And that allows you to sort of set a range. So as you click, it only selects within a certain area and then branches out. If you don't care about that, you can leave that off if you want. And just start to click and drag through. But notice how the sky started to get selected. So let's go ahead and take advantage of that Color Clusters option there. And we'll just Option click and Cancel become Reset. And we can click. And there we go. That worked well. Hold on the Shift key, start to drag through a little bit. We can pull the fuzziness down. And what we're just trying to do is select the mountain area. And that did a nice job. That looks good. I'll click OK. And you'll notice that we have a nice active selection, well defined by the area of bricks. I'll go ahead and add an adjustment for levels. And we can open that up just a bit. And you see there, we're just affecting the rocks. So that looks pretty good. Open that up. Put a little contrast back in. And you can quickly see there how we were able to make a very localized adjustment. Let's go ahead and over to another image here. And we'll try the technique again. We'll say Select Color Range. Now let's zoom in just a little bit here on the car and try that. Click on the car to make a selection. And then hold down the Shift key and drag through to select more. And you see it starts to pick up more of the car. There we go. And I'm getting a pretty good selection there. Just pick up a little bit more. There we go. And that worked out well. Notice it picked up a little bit of the rocks up here. If I need to, I could hold down the Option key for Subtract and click on those rocks and remove those from the selection. Adjust the fuzziness slider to taste. And then you could just go ahead and click OK. We've got a nice selection made of just the car. And I'll add a hue saturation adjustment layer. And now we could roll the color of the car. Notice changing it to more of a purplish blue or just warming that up a bit to a hotter red. There we have an orange. And we could tweak that by just painting on the mask as needed. Paintbrush tool and a quick paint job there. We could pick up more area. That's working really well. Let's go ahead and set that back closer towards the zero value and simply pop the saturation, making the car much redder and darkening it down just a bit. And you see lots of flexibility there where you can make a very isolated adjustment. On to our next image here. We'll try color range again for a different purpose. And this time, I want to select the rocks. But instead of worrying about the rocks, I'll select something that's much easier. In this case, the entire sky. Sometimes you're going to want to go ahead and select what you don't want and then reverse the selection. We can do this by choosing Select Color Range and click on the sky. Hold down the Shift key and just drag through until the sky is selected. Pick up any areas you need to. And then click the Invert button to reverse the selection. Notice we've got a pretty good selection there. Nice preview down here. Click OK, and we have effectively selected everything but the sky. This would make it very easy to do an isolated adjustment. For example, maybe I want to leave the sky in color, but convert the rest of the photo to black and white. We can do that very simply, add an adjustment layer here. And let's just go ahead and click and start to affect that adjustment independently. There we go getting a nice effect where we've left the sky intact but stripped away the color from the rest of the photo. The Color Range command is very, very versatile. I've got one more photo just to show you this in play. Same sort of thing here. We select what we want. Sometimes it's a much more subtler issue, like the greens just aren't green enough. Well, we could choose Select Color Range 
and you don't even have to make a selection. Up top, you have a simple preset list. You could say, select everything green inside the image. And when you click OK, it'll make an initial selection. So very flexible. Let's make sure we've got all the channels chosen there. Or select color range, and we could choose blues. And you see that it selected the blue sky. Click OK. I've got a decent selection. Add vibrance adjustment here. And notice that I can go after just the blues in the sky, popping those, making them bluer, or pulling them down a little bit so they're not as intense. Select color range, and we'll grab the greens. Click OK. And we can go back and add another adjustment and just pull up the greens in the image and make those pop a bit more. So, Lots of flexibility with those adjustments, all tied to using a great selection. And that's exactly what the color range command will do. Hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Photoshop for Video. My name is Rich Harrington. I invite you to check out more. You'll find me at creativecow.net in the Photoshop forums answering questions. Thanks again.